Hey there, so in today's video, we're gonna talk about how toxic perfectionism can actually sabotage your treatment goals in finding pain relief and powerful pleasure. I'll tell you about the top three obstacles that are getting in the way and how to overcome them. Now, if you're struggling from pelvic pain or have recovered and want to learn on how to create healthy relationship with your sexuality or your partner, make sure that you subscribe so that you can get access to more, even more free content from a sex therapist who's been in your shoes. I'm Kana Cassard, and I've been helping vulva owners and couples recover from the difficulties of pelvic pain, lack of arousal, and issues with intimacy since 2006. Now, today's video, we're going to be talking about perfectionism, and it's such a hot topic that I will actually be making a part two. So make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on the powerful information and content that will help you overcome toxic perfectionism. So if you're here, you probably identify as a perfectionist, maybe a type A personality, or what I like to call a high achievement driven individual. Uh, I'm a recovering perfectionist, so I understand and I never actually get it right, which my perfectionist brain is kind of like, well, I don't like that. <laughs> um, perfectionism can be a really amazing quality and it's probably why you're so good at your job, being a mom or a parent or being a skilled athlete or artist. But if you have pelvic pain, it's not likely going to be your best friend because it can actually get in the way of your pain treatment and your pleasure building practices. And this is what I call toxic perfectionism. So I'm gonna tell you about the top three obstacles of toxic perfectionism that get in the way of my client's healing process. And the first one is procrastination. This is like leaving exercises or dilators or therapy treatment for later and just be putting it off. Um, and it makes a lot of sense that we procrastinate because having to do any of these things is a reminder of how much emotional and physical pain we're having to deal with. So you're not motivated. Like who, who would feel motivated to confront that? Um, it's, it's just not reasonable to expect us to be motivated for it. So here's the hack. Instead of thinking about, oh, I have to do this thing, or I need to do my dilator today, or I need to do my creams, think about instead how you want to feel after. So this might look like, I want to feel accomplished today, and these are the things that I need to do it. For me, it works really well when I have to do the laundry, which like I really don't enjoy doing, so I never think, oh, I need to do laundry. Instead, I think, I really wanna feel productive today with my household chores. What are the steps I need to do to do that? Oh, laundry is one of them, straighten up the, the room is another. It really actually helps and, and shifts things for my brain. So the second way that toxic perfectionism shows up is that people pair success in pelvic pain treatment to worth as a person, a woman, a partner, a, a wife, a spouse, whatever. The, the like mindset or the thought process that's there is if I'm able to have sex, I will be a good partner. I will be a good wife. I will be a good spouse. I will be doing my duty as my partner's partner. Well, this is totally not true. And you are lovable and worth more than what your vagina is able to do. Now, these are really hard belief systems to unpair. So if you are battling with this, it's going to be important to get professional help to rewire that belief system in a really healthy way. The third thing is thinking that everything is all or nothing. And the problem with that is that you don't see small progress as success. So if you just have pain-free sex or pain-free penetration as like the goal, then you're in for a really long process and it'll never feel satisfying because even when you get pain free, you might then have to figure out how to actually have a healthy relationship with your sexuality or with your partner. And then you might feel disappointed that you don't know how to do that. And then everything is kind of downhill from there. So in order to make this process more sustainable so that you don't burn out from it, um, the important skill here is to figure out how to have joy and meaning in the little wins. So I always tell my clients to like find the little wins and celebrate the little wins. Like for instance, did you apply creams four times this week instead of twice like last week? 
Did you hold your dilator in for a little bit longer without anxiety or with less pain compared to last week? That's like celebration. We want to celebrate those things. And even if it means that, or even if you like have like a little bit of a dip, so let's say you're making progress, little wins progress, and then you have like a rough week and then you have less progress. That's okay because that is a part of the journey. The journey is not this like straight uphill um, battle, although it can feel totally like a straight uphill battle. Instead, I, I like to encourage my clients to think about it as like um, sort of a circle. And they're going around and maybe sometimes they come down, but like ultimately they're working upwards no matter what. So it might feel like one step forward, two steps back, but it's it's not when you celebrate the little wins and help yourself um, feel okay and feel like you're moving forward. Uh, and that, that takes a lot of work and effort, but with the right professional helping you with that, it can be an easier, a much easier process. So the bonus that I wanted to say here is that starting to make these little changes, even the ones that we've talked about today, in your thinking and in your experiencing um, around perfectionism and around the expectations you have, they can really make a significant process, change in your process. And so I always suggest to my clients to think about like, instead of doing one large effort of things you have to do, that instead just small consistent practices over time will really make that change. So in summary today, we talked about the three ways that toxic perfectionism can sabotage your pelvic pain treatment. The first one is procrastination. The second one is using pain treatment as and sex as a way to measure your worth. And number three is having the all or nothing thinking. So with the suggestions I gave you here, you can start using them today and make the world of difference. All it takes is small little changes consistently and you'll be on your way to relief and powerful pleasure. Now keep an eye out for part two to toxic perfectionism. Make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell. You'll keep getting good content, but you'll also, the YouTube powers that be, will learn that this content is relevant to people like you looking for relief, looking for uh, powerful pleasure techniques from a specialized expert, and we'll make sure to get them in front of other people who need it, just like you. Thanks for watching.